Brighton today is still largely famous for the same reasons it was over 200 years ago, its seaside location and the artistic culture. For generations, the world-famous lanes in the heart of Brighton have enjoyed a lively reputation for being haunted. Brighton's image as a centre for psychic activity was first fostered by writers of popular ghost books and then successfully maintained by the guides for the ghost walks and tours which pass through Brighton today. So what better place to start our journey into the paranormal than with Rob Marks, head of the Brighton Lanes Ghost Walk. I discovered a book of ghost stories, very good ghost stories, and uh, I suddenly thought, oh, maybe I could run a ghost walk here in the lanes. What better backdrop? Ghost stories are always you know, very compelling, whether people believe them or not. Just look at the number of um, uh, books, short stories, films that will be made about ghost stories. I don't think you necessarily have to believe, but it's good entertainment value. Fun and high drinks, really, yeah. It's in the spirit of Brighton. You know, why people come to Brighton, I've always come to Brighton. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a place where people come to enjoy themselves, to have fun. So, although we take what we do very seriously, we don't take ourselves too seriously. With all the research I've needed to do for the stories, of course I've, I've taken an interest and I meet a lot of people who um, tell me all kinds of things in absolute earnest of their experiences. I would say probably 70% of the time there's often a logical explanation of things. But there's a grey area and I would never be dismissive of that. A popular paranormal story takes place at the West Pier. On December 29, 2002, the pier suffered a serious partial collapse during a storm when a walkway fell into the sea. On the 28th March 2003, a fire broke out that firefighters were unable to reach due to the collapsed walkway. Then on May the 11th and 12th, two more fires broke out, consuming what was left of the pier. It is said that the only building that survived the flames was the Tarot Reader's Hut, which stayed intact and standing for years after. Next, we met with paranormal researcher Duncan Barford, who owns the Brighton Paranormal website. Brighton Paranormal, I founded um, in 2012, August 2012, and uh, I was very surprised to find that it's, it's been very slow getting off the ground. Um, I sort of imagined, you know, Brighton, Brighton being what it is. There must be hundreds of people um, down here who are interested in the paranormal and having all sorts of experiences. But it doesn't seem to be the case at all. Sometimes when activity comes into people's lives that they perceive as, as being paranormal, it can be very distressing. And um, what Brighton Paranormal aims to do is to provide a, a, a resource to people that we adopt a, a rational approach. That's, that's our aim. We go in there rationally. You could take a medium into someone's house and, and they could say, oh, well, I'm picking up, there are five ghosts here. Well. Where does that leave you, you know? I mean, obviously the medium is having some sort of experience that they think is true, but that experience really ought to be an object of investigation rather than a means of kind of generating information about a case. I had those experiences, but I don't know what it was that caused those, and that's something that I've always been interested in, whether it's actually possible to uh, arrive at some sort of definite knowledge of uh, what can create experiences like that. I spent a night alone um, in the old police sales museum in the basement of Brighton Town Hall which is allegedly haunted. The ghost of an ex-chief constable called Henry Solomon who was murdered in the actual police cells which is why it's got its spooky reputation and to my surprise things happened. Although people in Brighton find paranormal stuff very entertaining and you know sort of quite thrilling and, and a bit of a laugh I think really the population in Brighton in general is probably just a bit too cool to take um, ghosts that seriously. Despite the supposed lack of belief, there are many groups of people that dedicate a lot of time and effort into exploring the paranormal, such as Truth Searchers UK. We go in, we invite members of the public to join us um, by way of buying tickets. There is no profit. We, we're not interested in making profit. We don't draw wages, none of the team do. We do it because we have an interest in the paranormal. 
Once we have a, a very large range of equipment we use from K2s, hearing enhancers, night vision goggles, um, we do laser grid pens, cell sensors, um, so that's all the more modern stuff that we use. Um, and then we have the more traditional equipment such as Ouija boards, table tipping, glass divination. Um, and so just for me it's more, because I, I don't class myself as being sensitive or a medium in any way, shape or form. Um, so for me it's what other people pick up, um, whether it be names, dates, and then I try and marry that up against the building and the places that we visit. That's, that's my bit that I love to do. I, I wouldn't go into a building and go, yeah, that's definitely haunted um, straight away. You know, we have to investigate it at least a few times to, s to see what is occurring there. I actually knew that I was different <laughs> um, ever since I was a young child. Um, going back to about eight or ten years of age, um, I would pick up on things, see things, hear things. Um, that others wouldn't. You often, um, you'll often hear a medium say, "Look, you know, your grandmother comes and visits you. You'll know when she's about because you'll smell something or you'll feel something." Um, our loved ones often come back to keep an eye on us, and they, they, you know, it doesn't matter if you knew them or not. Even if you didn't know your grandmother when she when she passed, because she might have passed before you was born, she would have been there in spirit watching you grow up. The ones who are closed-minded that have never experienced it and debunk it and say that it's what a load of cod's wallop. Um, I feel sorry for them. They're living in a very singular world, sitting in this little bubble that nothing can penetrate. Um, they need to open their eyes, open their ears, and open their hearts to the rest of the world. Um, experience it firsthand. You have to try it for yourself. Um, the, rather than going, it's rubbish, um, I would say try an investigation, do a proper investigation with, with a reputable company um, and, and open your mind up to it rather than just going, it's a load of rubbish. After meeting with the Truth Searchers team, they invited us along to one of their investigations taking place in the old police cells under the town hall. Having previously discussed the location with Duncan, we jumped at the chance. We even joined in with a few of the group activities in an attempt to communicate with spirits. While at the investigation, we spoke with a few of the participants to find out about their experiences. Um, basically, when I lost my sister, I started to see her. And it started more by her. And then I could walk around and I could sense that other people were on the other side and they were there. And it kind of opened my eyes more. There are many supposedly haunted locations in Brighton, a lot of which seem to be pubs, such as the Cricketers, the Black Lion and the Druid's Head. Maybe Brighton is too cool for ghosts, but finding a knowledgeable sceptic in Brighton proved to be very difficult. So we travelled to Eiford Manor in Bradford-on-Avon to meet with Hayley Stevens, who is a paranormal believer turned sceptic, to learn more from the point of view of a non-believer. My name's Hayley Stevens and I blog at hayleyisaghost.co.uk. I became interested in the paranormal from a young age because I grew up with somebody, my, my mum, who had an interest and I just kind of went along with it and I was just very interested because I saw all these books around the house all the time and you know she spoke quite openly about weird things that she had experienced when she was younger and I just grew up believing that ghosts were real. A few things that I witnessed changed my mind and just things that didn't quite make sense to me so I started doing further research you know going beyond the paranormal themed websites and looking at the you know the psychological research and things like that and I realised that a lot of the things that I was witnessing had alternative explanations. Normally people will get in touch with me if they've had some strange experiences and I'll work out whether it's right for me to go in there. Sometimes it's not the right thing to do. Um, and sometimes you'll hear things, I'll hear things in the news about things happening at certain places and it will kind of catch my attention and I'll go and investigate them. But it's more people coming to me rather than me going to other people. It can be frustrating sometimes, but you just have to accept that, that you're not always going to find an answer. 
and it's it is important i think for ghost hunters to understand um that just because they they can't find an answer doesn't mean there isn't an answer that definitely could be it's just you don't have access to it there have been a few cases that i haven't found definite answers for um and there have been things that i've witnessed myself things that have happened to me that I can't necessarily explain. But I think it's important to remember that just because something can't be explained doesn't mean it's unexplainable. When people say that they've experienced weird things, I can say, well, I believe you've had these experiences because I've had similar in the past, or I've had other strange experiences of my own. And I think that probably sets me apart a little bit from other skeptics. There isn't a definition for what a ghost is, so you can't say these experiences are caused by ghosts because nobody knows for sure what a ghost is.